Here we are. Right. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. So, guys, as you know, the topic is 20 qualities of a good teacher trainer. And here we go. R right. Uh, Shady, can you do that one? Yeah. The floor is yeah. yours. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, quickly, as Saeed said, um, right, I mean, um, um, I'm, I'm sorry that I cannot take questions while we are actually presenting. So what we're going to do that we're going to see uh, all your questions in the chat box. So everything is kind of easy for, for everyone. Uh, now, I'm, I'm starting with this slide here where I want you to uh, learn some information about me right quickly. And actually, I'm going to show you some statements about me. Two of them um, are untrue. So in the chat box, <laughs> try to spot these untrue statements, right? Uh, you will find some weird stuff, right? Let me see. That's kind of a guessing game, eh? Right. Oh, here we are. Oh, someone is saying two and three. Two and three. Okay. Someone is saying one and eight. One and eight. Okay. Right, someone is saying eight, one and two, one and six. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, lovely. Okay, one and seven, six and eight. Okay, let, let's let's see who's gonna be a winner here. Right. Well, let me take you through each one. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. So Said, um, I guess you know, declared. Yeah, I mean, three and seven actually are untrue. But let me just tell you a bit of things. I have won a Kung Fu Championship. Well, that, that is true because my opponent didn't show up. <laughs> so I'm not very proud of this, right? Uh, <laughs> I've got six children, yeah, because I don't waste time. Um, I have one brother. That is very true. Um, I have read more than 30 Bond novels. I'm crazy about James Bond novels. And an elephant was about to attack me. Yeah, very true. Yeah, it happened. It was in a game reserve in South Africa. I've been to nine countries. Very true. Um, I love collecting DC comics. I love Batman and Superman. Yes, I do. Right. Okay, so I guess it is Saeed's turn. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, if you have any questions to share, you can just put them in the chat box, okay? Same thing about myself. Can you guess? Just put the number in the chat box. Let's see if you're going to spot them. Oh, everyone is saying one and seven. Seven and nine. Okay, we have different answers now. Seven, 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 seven. What's seven? I live in Dubai. Yes. <laughs> I don't live in Dubai, actually. I live in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Yes, right. One <laughs> is not true. Why? What do you think? Uh, how old I am? I'm just, I'm just 38. Yes. <laughs> So what oh, is true? I'm just, I'm Saeed, just you're 38. 38. You're yeah, 38. Yeah. You, you, yeah. you mean that you're older than me? Yeah, <laughs> because you're 45. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I lived in China. Uh, I lived three years in China. I was working as an oral English teacher. And there I ate pork um, without knowing. And I was about to eat a frog. You know, but alhamdulillah, I discovered that. And I have two bachelor degrees and I'm a Delta holder, an MA TESOL student. And I'm a Cambridge examiner at the British Council as well. And I speak three languages, English, Arabic, and Chinese, <laughs> not French, Chinese. Okay, if you have any questions, just put them in the chat box. I, I, I hope I can have time to answer them. Okay. So now, guys, just tell us something about yourself in the chat box. We also need to know you. So tell us something interesting about your qualifications or your experience, please. Thank you. Some people like the background, <laughs> the presentation. Uh, an accountant. So, we, we, uh, Shadi, we don't only have teachers here. We have oh. someone who is an accountant. Yeah, maybe he's interested in training. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, a lot of people want to um, shift their careers and become English teachers, which is fine. Right. Uh, okay. Some of them learn German. Oh, wow. I know some of them uh, in person, you know. Some of them are our friends on Facebook. and Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can see lovely faces as well. Okay. Yeah. Love that. Right. Yeah. Great. 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 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. So uh, these are the session outcomes. Actually, please have a look at them. And get yourself a pen and a piece of paper. You might want to take some notes or write down some questions. Okay. Yes, Shadi, please. Okay, right. So now here we are, my friends. Which of these two cases are you? Okay, teacher trainer, like you are already a teacher trainer, or you want to become a teacher trainer. So um, we would love to know that, right? So also in the chat box, write that to us as well. Mm, okay. Oh, lovely. So, yeah, so this was expected, Shady. You know, some yeah. of them are trainers, yeah. some of them are interested to become a teacher trainer. Okay, good. Wonderful. So, let's get started, guys, with the first, the first quality ever in this session. Here we go. Having a good knowledge of the English language. What does that mean? Can you tell us in the chat box, please? Before I show you the answer I have for you. To know more about the four skills, proficiency. To master the four skills, okay. Fluency, accuracy. Grammar, vocabulary, yes, very good, very good. Which level you think a teacher trainer should be? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. High C1, not just C1, because some, some people who are not teachers, they are C1, actually, they are seven. So let's say high C1 or C2, okay? So here, when we say having a good knowledge of the English language, okay, we're talking about the linguistic competence. We're talking about your spoken English and your written English at the same time. And as I said, it shouldn't be less than C1, and it should be high C1 or C2. And when we talk about language, we talk about fluency, we talk about accuracy, we talk about coherence, cohesion, range of grammar, range of lexis, accuracy of grammar, accuracy of lexis, and pronunciation. And when we talk about pronunciation, we don't talk about accents. Please don't annotate on the screen. <laughs> So when we talk about pronunciation, okay, we don't talk about accents because accents are okay. But the most important thing is to make sure that the accent just has a minimal effect on your pronunciation. Because if you have an accent or a heavy accent or a strong accent, that will not be good for you as a teacher trainer who wants to talk to the world. Thank you very much, Shadi. Okay, right. Here we go. I mean, let's go to um, this quality. And it says understanding of the specific context and aims of the course participants. And my question is, why do you think understanding the context is important, my friends? I, I would love to hear some answers. Hmm. Let me check the chat box and see. Hmm. Why understanding the context is important for a teacher trainer? Cultural differences. Um, that's um, shared in Turkey. Okay, thank you. Well, that's um, totally agree. And uh, Ahmed Safa said educational background. Uh, well, yeah. And um, to convey the meaning. Well, yeah, that is the context that is related to teaching language. But here we're talking about the context of the whole training process. Uh, to me, there needs be selective. I love that. See theme and topic. Okay, wonderful, wonderful answers. Now, let, let me just read this um, quote to you. And let, let's have a look at this side. Right, it says, always design a thing by considering it in its next larger context. A chair in a room, a room in a house, a house in an environment, an environment in a city plan. Now, what do we mean by this? Well, as a teacher trainer, you have to understand the context where you deliver your training. 
So if you go to a secondary school, a government secondary school in Egypt, for example, to deliver a, a, a session on how to teach speaking, you need to expect what those teachers would say to you. Because some of these teachers would say to you, hey, wait a minute, why do we need to um, understand how to teach speaking when our exam does not include focusing on speaking? Then understanding the educational context and the educational backgrounds and the problems, it is very important for a teacher trainer. You don't just copy and go paste in any context, right? For example, and let me tell you this quick story because I, I only have one minute left for this slide. Let me tell you that. Now, um, one of our friends, she finished her CELTIC course and this is what she did. She took an input session from the CELTIC course. She copied that and she went to a primary school where she had their primary teachers and she delivered the input sessions to primary teachers and after the session was over the teacher said oh wonderful we really liked it but uh, can we use this with our young learners and holy moly <laughs> of course no because the session actually on the CELTA course was designed for the sake of teaching adults. Now, this is what I'm talking about. You need to understand your audience. You need to understand the context. A good teacher trainer understands the system. You go to an IG school, you understand the IG system. You go to um, an American school, you understand the American system. Or finally, you will deliver something that is not needed by your teacher. So, um, the, the second quality. Yeah, and this takes us to my point, my third point, which is rich and varied experience of teaching and teacher training. So guys, just tell me, how many teaching contexts are you familiar with? If you work in a school, a university, a language center, if you've ever taught business English exam class, English for specific purposes, tell me, tell me please. Good. Checkpoint, American Diploma, ESOL, IELTS, Business English. Yes, very good. Wide experience. Schools, what kind of schools? Even ask yourself, is it an international school or a national school or a governmental school? Because they're different, you know. In some schools, teachers only speak English. In others, they speak English and Arabic, okay? So this is what I'm trying to say here. Like, if you would like to be a good teacher trainer, you should have this wide range of experience. You should be like that kind of school teacher, that kind of university teacher, language center teacher. You have experience in an English speaking country or a non-English speaking country, okay? Like teaching in China, for example, that's a non-English speaking country. Teaching business English or exam class like IELTS or TOEFL. Teaching English for specific purposes this what makes you a good trainer, actually, one of the qualities. Thank you. Shady. Yes, here. Ready, sir. Okay, and we come to this one. Um, understanding of and sensitivity to different cultures and values. Right, and uh, let me set my time watch because I'm really terrible with time. But yeah, here, here I am. Okay, so um, now talking about this, and I would ask this question, why do you think, my friends, that culture and being sensitive to culture is an important uh, quality for a teacher trainer? Please write me in the chat box. I would love to uh, see um, your comments. More effective. Okay, um, that's Luca Well, Yeah, well... I agree, but a bit too general. Um, the appropriate materials, well, fine. Inappropriate situations, I agree. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, some things are not accepted. Okay, that's also. And Hani Joseph, uh, yeah, wonderful, common ground. But right, right, right. Wonderful, wonderful, my friends. Now, let's, let's share the points I'm going to cover, Said. Thank you, my friends. Okay, and the first point I would say, now, being sensitive to cultures is, is very important. It's a very important quality of a teacher trainer because a, a teacher trainer has to be a tolerant person. 
yes, a teacher trainer is a human being who has his, his or her own values and culture. Okay. But always remember that um, in, in the training session, you don't need to impose your culture or your principles on others, right? Um, you, what you need to do is to train others, not to force them to believe what you believe. So you need to respect also other cultures. And this is why I say be fair, no matter what. It doesn't matter who's sitting right in front of you. Life is too big, okay? People will sit right in front of you and they come from different backgrounds, different cultures, different relations. It doesn't matter, okay? You treat them, okay, uh, fairly, you're honest with them, and that's it. That's number one. Number two, make sure that your sessions, the information you deliver, okay, are adapted, okay, uh, to, this, to these cultures. Let me give you a quick example from something that happened um, with me, right? Um, I was supposed in this session um, um, actually to train my teachers uh, to, uh, on a game. It was a, a gamification session. And the game is called um, Dead Famous, where, you know, uh, my candidates are supposed to play dead characters and their friends are supposed to guess who they were. Now, of course, I, I, I cannot come up with dead characters, Egyptian dead characters like Abdel Halim Hafez and, you know, and Muhammad Abdul Wahab and all uh, these characters. I had to dig deep, you know, in the South African culture to come up with famous people from their culture. So when I deliver the session, it's somehow meaningful to them. Okay, so it is very, very, very important, my friends, to understand the culture of your audience if you want to deliver effective training and also avoid being in, in, in embarrassing situations, I'm telling you. Right, yeah, so the coming quality, yeah. my friend. Sure, yeah, so uh, talking about delivering sessions uh, should be preceded by something, which is planning sessions. I know all of us are teachers and we plan uh, like we create lesson plans, right? So here, have you ever created a session plan? I'm going to send you one uh, on the WhatsApp group after the session, okay? But what do we need to do or what do we need to know in order to deliver, in order to create first a session plan and to deliver it effectively? Can you type in the chat box, please? Class profile, good one. Timing, okay, good one. The goals, the outcomes, excellent. The materials, very good one. Yeah, this is one of the things I'm gonna talk about now. Anticipated problems and solutions. Yeah, exactly the same as uh, teaching learners because training teachers is quite similar to teaching uh, uh, learners. Assumptions as well, uh, visual aids, okay. So here I'm talking specifically about two things, input types and task formats. And when we say input types, we talk about the materials, the materials you're going to use in the session. And this could be videos, audios, texts, graphics, or handouts. And then we talk about the task formats. And when we say task formats, we're talking about the activities or the tasks you're going to design uh, uh, in the session. And this could be agree or disagree statements or true or false statements. Could be classification or think, pair and share, matching, SAQ, short answer questions, or MCQ, multiple choice questions, or responding to sentence prompts. And we're going to have this in the end of the session, at the end of the session. And we might also have video analysis. So in order for you to design a session plan and to deliver a training session effectively, you should be aware of many things, but the most important things from my point of view are the input types, the materials, and the task formats, the activities. Handouts are worksheets that you give to the learners or the, the, the trainees to do a task. Okay, thank you very much, Shadi. Righty then, and let's come to the following point, my friends. And uh, it says, um, well, practical experience in techniques of ELT. Example, teaching grammar, pronunciation, 
you name it. And um, oh, someone is saying my voice, it seems that it's not very clear. Is it clear now? Hopefully, so say yes in the chat box if it is okay to make sure that I don't have a cracking, <laughs> lagging. Oh my God, very, oh, someone saying it's very lagging. clear. Okay. Is it lagging, Saeed? If you have a mic. If you have a microphone, Shadi, don't touch it because uh, it seems like you have a microphone. Oh, and yeah. yeah, so don't touch it. Just stay away from it. Okay, okay, right. I'll do. Uh, now, let me say something, my friends. Um, and can you share the saying I put in there, Said? Because I, I always say this to my trainees. I always say you can be a teacher without being a trainer. But you cannot be a trainer without being a teacher and the reason why i say that because how come you can be a good uh, trainer if, if you're not if you're not a good teacher in the first place and the reason why i say that is because some people think that oh yeah i've become a trainer so i don't need to become a teacher anymore and this is i'm sorry to say it this is very spread in our field some people say oh uh, i've become a teacher trainer so I don't need to teach anymore. My friends, if you stop teaching because you've become a teacher trainer, then you will become a lousy teacher trainer. It's because every day you teach adds up to your profession as a teacher trainer. You even use, example, use examples from what you give to your students in your teacher training programs. So you, you can never say at one stage of your career that, oh, now I'm a teacher trainer, no more teaching. And I always go back to my students. And let me tell you, my friends, every time I go back to my students and teach general English, I learn more. So, uh, so please do not think that teacher trainers are superheroes um, who stopped learning. We, still, we, we will keep learning till the day uh, we die. And uh, you need to understand that you can never, again, and I'm stressing this because I've heard that millions of times, people kept saying, oh, I just want to become a teacher trainer and to stop being a teacher. Well, well, my, my, my friend, it's, it's, it's just, these are hallucinations. Okay, hallucinations, my friends. Right, so next point, Said. That's why they say, Shadi, trainers should go back to the classroom regularly. Of course, of course. Yeah. Of you course. can't you can't quit, quit quit teaching if you want to be a trainer actually no, impossible okay. impossible yeah, yeah. I agree I agree all right so uh point number seven is being able to integrate technology in the training class and what kind of technology uh am i talking about here guys Yes, PowerPoint. No, I'm not talking about using a smart board or PowerPoint presentations. No, internet, websites. What kind of websites? Yes, quizzes. Yes, Kahoot. Yes, yes, gaming, WordWall, Quizlet. Perfect. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. So as a teacher or a teacher trainer, you should be able to integrate technology in the training class. And when we talk about technology in the training class, we're talking about the online assessment tools. Like what? Like what you said, and here I have even some more. Kahoot, quizzes, clickers, Padlet, Jamboard, whiteboard.fi, Nearpod, Quizlet, WordWall, Google Classroom, Google Forms, Live Worksheets, Call Everywhere, and Flipgrid, many. So if you're not familiar with these online assessment tools, Try to familiarize yourself with, with them, okay? Make an account and try to use them. And you can even use some of the ready-made uh, ready worksheets. Like if you have an account on live worksheets and then you are not able to design a live worksheet, you can find some ready-made, all right? Good, yes, Padlet. We're going to use the Padlet in this session, by the way. And we will share this PowerPoint presentation. Yes, don't worry. Canva as well. Canva is a, is a good website to design uh, some posters. Yes, perfect. Perfect. Yes, please, Shadi. 
Okay, totally agree with what Said said. I mean, you, uh, in, in this world, especially in a world of COVID-19, you cannot survive with a bit of technology. Uh, well, you, you don't have to know all that, but at least two applications or something. And, and here we are, flexibility and ability to adapt to different circumstances and goals of trainees. Right, wonderful. And again, that's a very important quality, my friends, um, of a teacher trainer. But let me ask you this question. Um, why should a teacher trainer be flexible and able to adapt himself or herself? Um, I would love to see some of your ideas in the chat box. Why do we need to be flexible? Is, is it, you know, is it important? Let's see. Well, be human. I totally agree, Iman. Uh, Ahmed Ruda also, um, yeah. Ahmed Ruda said, nothing is fixed at all. Yeah, this is life, my friend. And uh, Muhammad Mahmoud, not to get bored. Well, yeah, a, a boring trainer is a horrible trainer, isn't it? Right. Mm. And to meet all the students' needs in a belt. Totally agree. I love this point, Ilham. Yeah, wonderful. Right. And Iman Haider said, to gain the trust. Well, I guess so. Right. Okay. Good. Now, uh, can we share the, the points I put Saeed in here in, in this part? Now, I would say, my friends, um, planning training, but train reality. A teacher trainer is a human being, as someone said in the chat box. And if you're a human being, then you need to learn how to adapt yourself to different situations. So, for example, imagine this situation. You planned your input sessions. You said, I will start with this. And this is my second stage, my third stage. Then you went into the training room and then you started following your input session plan. And your trainees look like this. And then you keep um, explaining and your trainees look like this. Then you stop, you know, um, your bloody training and adapt it for God's sake, because it seems that your plan is not working. Don't say, oh, I have to stick to my input session plan. No, you don't have to. So you plan your training, but you train reality. You have to be flexible and you have to give your trainees what they need. And because, again, yes, we plan everything, but life is not well planned all the time. Things might pop up. Change your plans accordingly. Right. So let's go to uh, Mr. Happy. Yeah. And this takes us to uh, the second. The th uh, I mean, the next point. This takes us to the next point about needs analysis. Okay the tools that we use to know about our students and the assessment procedures. Can you guys tell me in the chat box what needs analysis tools can we use before we start a session or a training course? Now, we can use Google Forms, okay, to create something. Yes, a questionnaire. Very good, Ilham. Yes, a diagnostic test. Very good. Learner profile. Okay, good, good. And how about the assessment tools? What do we need to know about assessment? The level of the students, placement test, diagnostic, interview, conversations, needs analysis. Good, good, good. Thank you very much. So for needs analysis, okay, before you start a training course, you need to have something like a needs analysis questionnaire, and you can design it on Google Forms, as Mr. Shadi said just now. And not you, Shadi, another Shadi. <laughs> and, and the diagnostic test uh, that you can know the um, strengths and weaknesses of the trainees so that you uh, address their needs and, and tap on their interests. And if you, if you would like to have a speaking interview or a speaking monologue to assess their spoken language, yes, you can do that. Another good area is the assessment procedure. Here, you should know the difference between formative and summative assessment. Which one, guys, is assessment for learning? And which one is assessment of learning? Which one we use during the course and which one we use after the course? Which one is progress test and which one is achievement test? 
Can you tell me in the chat box? Yes, good. So formative assessment is during the course and it's assessment for learning, progress tests. And uh, summative assessment is assessment of learning. It's an achievement test. We do it at the end of the course. Also, you need to be aware of the qualities of a good test. What are the qualities of a good test, guys? Practicality, yes, Mr. Husseini. Validity, Dr. Muhammad. Good, good. All levels, practicality, reliability, validity. Yes, perfect, perfect. So as a teacher trainer, you should be aware of the needs analysis tools that you can use to gather information about your trainees so that you can meet their needs and tap on their interests. And also you should be aware of the assessment procedures that you can use before, during, and after the course. Thank you. Well, um, I totally agree with what Mr. Happy said about needs analysis, which is simply um, how can you train someone when you don't know what he or she needs, right? And let, let's move to this one, be an honest, structured self-evaluation of performance as a trainer. Because, hey, if you're not honest with yourself as a trainer, if you don't accept your, fa your feedback yourself, how do you expect your trainees to, ex to, to accept feedback? Like, right, fair enough. How, how, how would you get them to accept feedback if, if this is not you? And again, my friends, that's why it is very important um, in your session all the time to show your trainees how much you, can, you, you were wrong at times in your career and use your own mistakes and errors as a novice teacher to build sessions around that, okay? And uh, this is what I call sessions that are based on critical incidents, like what? Like, for example, and, and, and by the way, th this, is, this is a story that I use a lot in, 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 a, in, in sessions, right? Uh, and, and, and the story actually is about me taking an authentic video from the internet. And let me tell you quickly about this session. I wanted to teach, and, and I was a teacher at that time, an office teacher. I, by the way, and at that time, I didn't do any TEFL courses, any, I mean, nothing at all. Uh, I was just Al Hamid al Magid, right? So nothing, right? And um, I decided to take a video on teaching closed items from the internet. I took it, and um, data show was a sensation at that time. Like to use a data show in class, that means you're a sexy teacher. Wow! And I decided, okay, let's go for it. I will use the data show, okay, and make myself famous. And I started displaying the video to my students. I played the video. The video showed, you know, close items. There was only problem, one problem. I didn't watch the video before displaying it in my um, room, classroom. And by the end of the video, there was um, an inappropriate picture at the very end of it, my friend. And hey, and by the way, it was an educational video designed by an educational company. And by the end of the video, there was an inappropriate picture on the whole wall of my class. And I was shocked. So someone might say, Shadi, and how do you use this in your training? I use it when I'm teaching my trainees about you, the use of authentic material. But how it is important to check your authentic material if you're going to bring them into the classroom. Always show your trainees that you're a human. You make mistakes like them. The mistakes they make are mistakes that you have made before. You're, you're not this kind of super uh, trainer that doesn't make mistakes because this is untrue. And this will give them in the feeling that, yes, yes, it's a learning process. It's okay that we make mistakes. You know, all of us make mistakes, learn from them, and develop. Uh, and let's move to uh, the following quality. Yeah, I agree with you, Shadi, that uh, teachers make mistakes. We even tell the students that even teachers make mistakes. And even native English speakers make mistakes. And it's okay to make mistakes because this is how we learn. Yeah, exactly. so great. Uh, point number 11 is being creative and able to design teacher training courses. 
uh, we talked in one of the points about being able to design uh, training sessions. And now we talk about designing a whole course. And if you know me or you know Shadi very well, you know that we love designing courses actually. And many of you might have studied with us or studying with us right now. So how to design a training course? What are the things that we should take into consideration before we say, hey, I'm going to design a training course for teachers? What do you think? Can you tell me in the chat box? Yeah, the outline of the course, very good. The market need, perfect. The needs of the trainees, the level of the trainees, the duration of the course, the objectives of the course, perfect, perfect. The age, <laughs> maybe yes. So yeah, point number one is the learner's profile. And when we say the learner's profile, we include the age, the language level, open or closed group, uh, monolingual or multilingual group. Um, is it morning or afternoon or evening class? Same mixed ability or, uh, 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 I mean, same ability group or mixed ability group. So when we talk about the learner's profile, we should think of the things that I mentioned just now. Then we move on to the needs analysis tools that we just mentioned, if you remember. Questionnaire, needs analysis questionnaire, diagnostic test, and a speaking interview or monologue. Then we move on to the activities and the materials. And I give them two terminologies from the Train the Trainer course from Cambridge, if you remember them. Activities are task formats, and materials are input types. Then we move on to this whole area of assessment, objectivity or subjectivity, formative or summative, and the good qualities of the qualities of a good test. We should be aware of all these things. What should be done before the course, what should be done during the course, and what should be done after the course, right? Yes, Shadi, please. Wonderful, wonderful quality. Thank you so much, Said. And let's move to having, Welcome, pra brother. having practical experience of dealing with commonly raised problems and issues. And um, I'll ask that question. Why do you think this is a very important quality of being a good teacher trainer? I would love to read some of your comments in the chat box. Hmm. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Why having practical experience? Adaptation, okay. How updated you are. Mm, okay. Commonly raised problems and issues, right? You have to know how to defend to respond quickly. Well, yeah. If that's in a sure of, yeah, I agree. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. Um, and do I really, really, she said, uh, different types of trainees. Oh, yeah. That's a good point, my friend. Right. And Ahmed Al Qirsh, suitable for Arab trainers, not European. Oh, ma my friends, uh, problems come from everywhere. I can tell you that. Okay. Humans are the same, whether they're Arabs or non Arabs. Um, understand the learners' problems. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful ideas. Now, let me say something here, my friends. Right. Having practical experience of dealing with commonly raised problems is because and being a teacher trainer, it means that you're under um, attack all the time. And that's the, the downside of this profession, because you will always have this candidate who might say to you, oh, Shadi, you were unfair to me today in your feedback. Right. And, and it happens all the time because. As a teacher trainer, you have to be honest with people. And sometimes, you know, I wouldn't say sometimes, all the time trainees exert a lot of efforts. But some efforts are being exerted in the wrong direction. And you have to be honest with them and tell them that, hey, I know you worked hard. However, you know, it was in the wrong direction. And some people don't like that. Then you need to be ready as a teacher trainer to respond to such issues and problems that might arise. And you have to be super duper calm. Super duper, because you can never believe 
the kind of comments that would come to you sometimes from some people. You know, unbelievable. And I always say to my trainees, hey, uh, don't worry. Uh, like, like this is what I say on the first day. We have to take a picture on the first day because after a week or another, uh, we'll start hating each other and killing each other after the TP and the feedback sheets. So let's have a picture while we're all smiling. And then I, I keep telling them that we, ha we have the thickest skin in the world as teacher trainers. So actually, we lost feelings. So what we do is that we assess you according to what you do. And sometimes you will have this meeting with a trainee and the trainee might say to you, Shadi, you were unfair. You gave more grades to this person than me. You need to be super duper calm when you're dealing with this. Like sometimes I say, okay, uh, yes, thank you so much. I do respect your opinion. Uh, please, if you feel that you need to write this, okay, and take it to the other level and complain, of course, you're welcome to do that. And this would not affect your grading in any way. Okay, we believe in transparency. You have the right to criticize me as much as you want. You need to keep it down, my friend, right? Very, very important because these things will keep coming all the way. So teacher training is not a walk in the garden, as some people might think. It is not, my friends. Your students will appreciate you all the time, but not your trainees. Be careful. It's different. It's yeah. different. Hmm. That, that's why teacher trainers should always have patience. <laughs> no, yeah, of course. You will, meet, you will meet different kinds of people, you know, right, people right. who appreciate and people who criticize, you know. Yes, so, course. yeah, you should, you should be patient all the time. Yes. So this leads us to being open to observation and evaluation. Because if you're not open to feedback, you're not going to learn. So if you want to be a good teacher or even a good teacher trainer, you should be open to feedback. You should be open to observation, to evaluation. You should always ask your peers, people who work as teacher trainers or people who are interested in giving feedback, observing and giving feedback. Or you might even ask your, you know, someone who is a mentor. Okay. And here is a question. If you invite someone to come to your training session, observe you, and you ask them to give you feedback after the session, what are you going to ask them to observe? Can you just think of some observation tasks that people might be uh, thinking of or observing when they are attending your session? Good. Questioning techniques, yes. In general, yeah, that's that's a good thing. But you know, sometimes you need to be more specific. Uh, uh, TTT is teacher talking time. In in training, we call it uh, supportive uh, uh, trainer talk. So it's STT in training. The eye contact, okay, controlling the session, managing the time, um, achieving the outcomes, body language, interaction, um, good. The aims, ICQs. Maybe some CCQs to check the concepts as well. Very good, very good. So here I have some points. Like if I invite Shadi or uh, someone to attend one of my sessions and to kindly give me feedback after the session, then I might ask Shadi to have a look at my session plan, the preparation I did before the session, the way I delivered the session or presented the session, the way I clarified things, or elicited information from the trainees, the type of training I used, whether it was theory to practice or practice to theory, and if it's effective or needs to be more effective. The pace of the course, I mean the pace of the session or the sequence of the activities. The input types as well, the task formats, and the STT when I'm monitoring the trainees, which is supportive trainer talk. Also, giving feedback would be a thing that I will be looking forward to getting feedback from one of my peers about uh, uh, after my session, right? Flexibility with the time management, responding to the needs of the trainees. Yes, very good. The lesson plan stages. Yeah, this is as a teacher, as a trainer, you can say session plan stages. Yeah, very good. Thank you very much, Chadi. 
Wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, points um, by you, my friend, Ray. Um, now, let's come to having management and organizational skills. And I know that some of you, you know, I mean, and but let me ask you that questions first. Why do you think that having management and organizational skills uh, is important for a teacher trainer? Please write me your answers here, because it sounds a bit away from our profession, you know. To achieve your aims, that's software. Okay, software, time management. Okay, right. Mm. Um, save time. Um, he's a leader of his own class. Okay, we should be a role model. Lovely. To run the session well. But I see that most of your answers are go around input session. Um, while actually, uh, can, you, can you think of a wider context for this point? Ha, ha, ha. Is it only about, you know, session management? Mm. Right. Let me talk then about this point, my friends. And let me say, first, a teacher trainer is a manager, not only um, a trainer. You're a teacher trainer, you're a manager. Why? It's because, hey, my friend, you have to design the bloody timetable. And timetable means what? Deciding on input sessions, deciding on times, deciding on ACTs, who would help you, deciding on the time when trainees come in and leave, uh, giving trainees the do's and don'ts, you know, what you should do, what you shouldn't do at the center. So there is a lot of managerial skills that a teacher trainer should have. And this is why Cambridge University, Trinity College, London, those big training entities, they differentiate between what we call an MCT and an ACT. An MCT stands for a main course tutor and an ACT is an assistant course tutor. And um, can you imagine that there is no difference in terms of the job between what these do too, except one area, management. The MCT is responsible for the, 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 the management of the course in terms of designing the timetable, the time for the input session, when candidates should arrive, when candidates should leave, um, what or how many ACTs should be on the course and all this stuff. So if you think that you can become a teacher trainer just because you know information, well, let me tell you, my friend, that is not enough to make you responsible for a course. If you don't have these managerial skills, the course can fall apart even if you're a good teacher trainer in terms of knowledge and information and designing. Not enough at all, my friend. So, um, I, yeah, I do agree with you, Shadi, that uh, being a teacher trainer is not only about uh, giving training sessions. Yes. You know, it's about planning training sessions, giving training sessions, observing teachers, and giving feedback. And this is the point I'm going to talk about now. Like in Shadi in the CELTA courses and myself in the TEFL courses, what we do is we observe teachers when they're doing the TPs, teaching practices, and we give them feedback after the sessions. And here we have two different types of feedback. Can you put them in the chat box, please? Yes, very good, Walid. Oral and written, yes. We can say spoken feedback and written feedback. Yes, spoken feedback and written feedback. And here we have two new terminologies. Are you familiar with them? Exploratory and judgmental. Have you ever heard these two terminologies? Exploratory and judgmental. Which one is better in uh, spoken feedback? No, I mean exploratory or judgmental. Not spoken or written. Yes, exploratory is way much better than judgmental feedback. Read this sentence, this question. Do you think you need to speak less during the lesson? That's exploratory language. Because you're asking the trainee. You want the trainee to respond to the question. And instead of saying what? 
Look at this sentence. You could have spoken less during the lesson. Which one is better? Which one is motivating? Of course, the first one. Let me give you one more example, okay? Muhammad, the lead-in was too long. That's judgmental. Who can make it exploratory? Who can? The lead-in was too long. Exploratory, hmm. Why the lead-in took too much time, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Muhammad, do you think the lead-in was too long? How can we make it shorter? You know, that's the way uh, good teacher trainers can give feedback, constructive feedback to the, to the trainees, okay, and help them improve and be aware of the learning experience. Chedi. Wonderful. I mean, um, one, wonderful explaining by Said and, and you know, um, clarification and talking about this quality, just giving feedback. Uh, no teacher trainer can survive without being good at giving feedback. That's the, the, the trickiest issue in, in our profession indeed. Now, let's go to maintaining an up-to-date knowledge of developments in ELT teaching and training theory and practice. And... Why is that important, my friends? Um, Shayma Mantawi, um, she says, being updated is very important. Thank you, uh, Mantawi. Thank you so much. But what else? Hmm. Why is it so important to be um, up to date? Hmm. How, how, how would that help you in your profession as a teacher trainer? Hmm. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, to match their needs, to be practical. Hmm. Because um, there is an update in theories every day and you should be aware. Yes, Shaymat Mantawi, now you gave me the answer I'm looking for. And thank you so much. Now, my friends, let me tell you something. Our profession, okay, um, has no end. Every day there is something new. Like, and um, as, um, you know, the famous story, when um, a guy came to Noam Chomsky saying, how do you feel after um, everyone discovered that what you said about language was wrong? And Noam looked at the guy and said, you can say I've changed my mind. It's as simple as that, right? Every day there is new in a profession. And as a teacher trainer, you can never be isolated on your own island thinking that, oh, yes, what I learned is what is out there, and that's it. Because any time a candidate can surprise you with a question, and I always say uh, to people working with me, I say more knowledge means more tolerance. Less knowledge means less tolerance. Because when you know more, you know that you can achieve your aim through many, many, many ways. But when you know less, you think that your way is the only way. And that's the problem. And then here comes um, a candidate and he would surprise you by saying, oh, Shadi, uh, but I heard that it could be done this way. Now, if you don't know, what would be the first answer? Hmm. Some people would say, no, that is wrong. It's because you're not aware. Some people will say, ah, I have no idea. Then that, my friend, is important. It is important that you're up to date. You read, you check, you uh, go to conferences, you listen to other people. Don't think that what you know is the most you know, recent information out there in the field. How you would do that? Reading, of course. Um, websites, of course. Conferences, yes, and we are in the digital world now. You can attend to unbelievable speakers everywhere from home. All what you need to do is just, you know, get yourself to sit in front of your computer. So sources are everywhere now. Okay, you just need to go out there and, um, and use them. Right, so, and the following quality with Mr. Happy. <laughs> And this will lead us to tolerance, Shadi, as you said. Tolerance is one of the interpersonal skills. 
Yes. Could you guys type in the chat box any other interpersonal skills that you know? As a teacher trainer, you should have some interpersonal skills. What are interpersonal skills? Being fair, patient, acceptance. You mean inclusion or diversity? Yes, good. Being up to date, empathy, friendly, cooperation, okay, flexible, praising, teamwork, supportive, honest, organized, optimistic, perfect, perfect, good listener. Okay, so here are some um, interpersonal skills, communication, leadership, motivation, positivity, caring, emotional intelligence, responsibility, active listening, teamwork, patience, flexibility, dependability, problem solving and being charismatic, having a sense of humor, being humble and remember a lifelong learner. Don't forget. It's not because you became a teacher trainer, you stop learning. Learning is an ongoing process. You should keep going all the time because learning is an ongoing process, right? Being a role model, very good, yes. And again, um, of course, as Said said, interpersonal skills, I mean, no doubt. Um, now, here we are, having the ability to perform effectively um, in challenging circumstances, and um, these happen all the time. And I've got some examples here, so let me, let me uh, get Said to show them to you. Show them, show them, Mr. Happy. Yes, yes. Okay, right. And here we are. So we've got, uh, I put deeper students first because this is what every CELTA tutor, TEFL tutor is suffering from around the world, not only in Egypt. It's just, you know, sometimes you have those TP students attending your CELTA and then the next day as a teacher trainer, you go to your training session happy and then, oh my God, there are no TP students. That's, that's, a, that's a very critical situation on a CELTA course. I remember myself in one Ramadan, wallahi, on a CELTA course. I was actually running all over the place trying to find TP students, uh, trying to convince the guards in the place to come and attend the session. Someone might say, oh, Shadi, but this happens because we are in Egypt. Well, let me tell you, my friends, it happens everywhere. It's, it's, it's a world crisis, and you need, as a teacher trainer, um, to, be, um, um, you know, to be able to respond to these you know, problems that, that, that would happen a lot on courses. I remember a friend of mine, and, and she told me this story, and, and, and she was one of the best places for teacher training in Kuwait. It was a CELTA course. And then um, she was looking for um, TP students. They didn't appear. They didn't show up. And she started looking for, you know, for, for TP students everywhere. So sometimes as a teacher trainer, you have to leave your place and deal with the problem. Not only that, think about COVID-19. When COVID-19 started, it started in the middle of a CELTA course. I was in the middle of a face-to-face -face CELTA course when the government said, no more face-to-face -face teaching. And you know what that means? It means that I have to shift everything I was doing to be online. So can you imagine this crazy CELTA course? Half of it, half of it face to face and the other half online. So some TPs were done online and some TPs were done face to face. And it was crazy, but I had to uh, respond. I had to learn how to start um, a Zoom session. And by the way, at this time, I didn't know how to use bloody Zoom. Can you imagine that? I had to learn everything so quickly. To the degree, before I, I, I end talking about this point, to the degree that I swear to God, the first day I was, you know, on a Zoom session, one candidate forget her camera open and she started brushing her teeth in the toilet while everybody was watching and I didn't know how to close her camera. It because <laughs> it was the whole I, session. <laughs> I didn't know how to do it. And I was, you know, I was freaking Said, really. Because I was thinking, oh, my yeah. God, how, how do I stop this? But alhamdulillah, she was just brushing her teeth. I mean, thanks, God. Um, last point, aggressive candidates. 
some sometimes you meet these um and and, and it's very very you, you know you need to keep calm my friend no matter what a candidate would say to you no matter take it to the management and if things get out of control leave the room and go never get in contact you know uh with a candidate who is getting aggressive just you know write emails and uh, forms and warning letters and that's it right so let's go to the following quality with mr happy I, I had one aggressive candidate in one of my uh, um, webinars shady it was, it was just you know offensive all the time you know trying to take me away from the session and i was cool i did my best not to interact in an aggressive way to him and yes finally we managed to finish the session and we edited the session, we removed everything, and the session is fine now. And this takes us to one of the interpersonal skills, guys. One of the interpersonal skills that I mentioned just now. Do you remember it? Conflict resolution, or what I said, problem solver. Yes, as a teacher trainer, you should be able to solve problems. Good. Yeah. So uh, my final point, Shadi, here, 19, being certified and qualified. This is a big argument, and I don't want to take part in it, but, you know, I have to say my point of view. And guys, tell me in the chat box what qualifications you think you need to become a teacher trainer. Delta, TEFL, TESOL, those courses were made to help you become a teacher, to teach learners. What courses are made to help you train teachers? It's not CELTA, it's not TEFL, it's not TESOL. It's the Delta or the DEP TESOL. Delta from Cambridge and the DEP TESOL is from Trinity College, London. Those two courses at level seven are made to help you become a teacher trainer in the field, not just a teacher, a senior teacher or a teacher trainer. Okay, what if I have an MA in TEFL or TESOL with a practical side, practical teaching project? Can I become a teacher trainer? Yes, you can. Definitely you can. <laughs> Lots of money, yes, I know. I'm not saying this because I have the Delta or Shadi has the Delta. I'm saying this because I never started teacher training officially before I got the, the full Delta, you know, because you will feel the difference. But if you have to become a teacher trainer, then go for it. Like some teachers work in some schools, Shadi, yes. uh, in Al-Azhar or in some schools, and they are requested by uh, the management or the seniors to give some training to the other teachers. Then the teacher can say, no, I'm not a Delta holder. I can't give training because Saeed said, no, please go for it. I deliver training here in Saudi Arabia seven years ago seven years ago, before even knowing anything about teaching qualifications. I delivered three workshops here in Saudi Arabia for Saudi teachers and teachers from all over the world. And they were very happy with that. And they said the training sessions were amazing. So I'm not saying if you don't have the Delta, don't go for, for teacher training. No, sometimes you're involved in that. Sometimes you're interested in that. Sometimes you want to try that, so please go for it. But if you want to become a highly effective teacher trainer, then go for the Delta or an MA in TEFL or TESOL with a practical teaching project. This is what I mean. Plus a course like Cambridge Train the Trainer. Plus some practices, some real practices. And of course, being gifted will help a lot. Yes, Shad, if you would like to uh, elaborate more on this point before you do your final point, yes, please. Well, I would say totally agree with what Said said. There is a big difference between in-house training when you are required by school to deliver workshops. Fine, everyone has something to give to others. And you might know something that me, Shadi, I don't know. Like some of the programs that Said put on the screen, he knows them. I, I don't know all of them. I know some of them. Then he can teach me something, you know. I might know something, I, you know, and I can teach someone else something. So this is there. But it is big. It, it is completely different. 
from being responsible for a course. That is a whole different issue. So this is too different. There is a big difference between going to a conference like Nile Tissol, you name it, um, Tissol Arabia, and deliver a workshop. Fine, everybody can do that. It doesn't matter whether you have a Delta or not. But that is completely different from being responsible for a TEFL course or a Delta course. Big, 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 big difference, my friend. And I totally agree with, with Said on, on that part. If you want to deliver a TEFL course um, or a SALTA course or a level five course, then you need to be at least a dip TESOL holder, a Delta holder, or an MA with a practical side holder. And why do we keep saying with a practical side? Because we know that some MAs here in Egypt are, are only about theory. So these would not fit uh, when it comes to teacher training. Um, Definitely. Right. So now my point here is this final one, which is engagement with professional ELT networks. CPD programs to keep knowledge and skills up to date. And I would say, my friends, why do you think that this one is important? Please write me in the chat box. I would love to see your comments. Hmm. Why? Why is this important to be? Someone is saying to show off. <laughs> I love that. Right. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you, Mohammed Mahmoud. Right, let's exchange experience. I love that. Show up. <laughs> I love it. Okay, uh, someone said uh, you need to learn more about the new trends. Well, yeah, agree. To keep on top of your game. I love that. Um, that was Saad and Sadiq, I guess. Uh, professional experience. Okay, lovely. Now, let me say something. Look at this, my friends. Um, I believe that it is very important that you are familiar with the big, you know, bodies in ELT. Very, very important. Like, think about IATFL, the International Association of, Eng of English Language Teachers. It's very important that you know this organization, you know, you go to their website, you know, and you, you know about their conferences. Also, TESOL International Association, um, like uh, I've, I've written in the first, you know, slide that I've been to nine countries. I, I wasn't playing. I love, you know, going to, to, to workshops and delivering and listening. And I, uh, you learn a lot. Um, Cambridge Assessment English, Trinity College London. You need to know what those people are doing when they have sessions, when they have conferences. Those are, those are the big guys out there in the field. One thing more to say, my friends. And I always say that um, to, to people who talk to me about conferences. They keep saying, Shadi, why do you go to a lot of conferences? I say the most important part of any conference for me is the coffee break. <laughs> now, some of you, <laughs> yeah, I mean, some of you might get surprised. Say, Shadi, what do you mean? Do you mean that uh, workshops are not important? They are. But what is more important? Network. Yes, exactly. So, oh, Mr. Happy got it because he's a smart man. See? Yes. It's because during the coffee break, this is when you build up relationships, my friends. This is how you make business and you get business, by meeting people, building relations with them, becoming successful. So, yes, don't deprive yourself from this goodness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So it's money, my friend, money, not only professional, it's money as well, because those people teach you how to make money and how do you, you make it in a good way. Right. So I guess and they, can, um, they can also share visit their YouTube channels. They have lots of recorded webinars, you know, especially besides channel and my channel. Of course. <laughs> no, I mean those channels. <laughs> no, let's market ourselves. We're humble, man. We're humble. <laughs> no, that's what we have to do here. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, guys, now we're done with the uh, 20 qualities of being a good teacher trainer. And now I'm going to send this link uh, on the chat box. I want you to join the Padlet and write a comment about something useful you learned today in this session. Thank you so much uh, for everyone who attended this session. Um, we're really happy to have you. And please um, don't be angry uh, with us uh, for not giving you uh, the floor to say much, you know, because 300. So 
we had no other way but running this session as a webinar. We would love to listen to every one of you, and we think you have very, very uh, valuable uh, things to say to us, but it is what it is because of the number of attendants. So um, thank you so much, everyone.